Now, moving on. My next piece of advice is to prepare your items. Now, this is something that my brother who recently went to Atlanta Comic Con learned with me, and that is to prep your items. So let me explain how it works. Um, let's say like this week, I'm going to go see Charlie Hunnam, who played Jax Teller on Sons of Anarchy. Now, he's a very big draw. So there'll be three, 400 people in his line to get his autograph. And while, you know, as a fan, you want to have this like long interaction with them and that kind of thing, it's usually pretty fast. Um, it's, the bigger the draw, usually the faster they go because they're trying to get to everybody, um, which I completely understand. So you walk up with your item, you know, you pay, you pay one person, they usually push the thing down. And then when you get up to him, you know, he says, hello, you say hello, you say something that you've been trying to, you know, dying to say for a while. He listens, he responds, he's signing your item, he hands it to you and you walk off. Um, now, what is the problem with that? The problem is that you have to be prepared. The more prepared you are, or your item is, the more likely you're going to get what you want. So what do I mean by that? Well, same thing with the paint markers. I bring my paint marker, I put it on my item, and I say, here, I want this sign in this paint or this color. Why? Because if that item just gets passed on, the person who you told isn't necessarily going to tell the fourth or fifth person down the line that's handling your item. So that's the first thing. Um, and oftentimes, you're so excited to meet these people that you start talking and you're not paying attention to your item, and they're signing wherever they want or however they want. And you're like, you know, you're enjoying that moment, but then you walk away and you're like, oh man. And that has happened to me several times. So when I say prepare your item, I mean use some painter's tape. I happen to have green, but normally it's blue or red or whatever. It doesn't matter. Painter's tape. Why? Because it comes off your item without damaging it. Um, you can use a sticky note. However, I have found that the sticky note that the uh, the glue residue sometimes will leave a mark on your on your piece, especially depending on what the piece is. So you just use painter's tape, nice and easy. You write down what do you want, you write down what color, and super duper important, any quotes. Now, nine times out of ten, if you walk up to a celebrity and you say, Hey, actually, I don't know if it's 9 out of 10. I'm just exaggerating here, but um, not like I've done a poll or anything. But So most of the time, you walk up to a celebrity, you hand them an item, they're going to sign it. They may include their character name in the movie or TV show or whatever, and then they hand it back to you. So most of the time, you're just going to get a signature. Some of the time, you're going to get a signature with a character name. Almost never. Do they do quotes on their own? So what I mean by that is if you leave it up to them, they're looking at the line, 300 people, they're not going to do quotes. Like if they did it for one person, they're going to do it for everybody, right? So they don't do that. They'll just sign it. Sometimes a character name. Here you go. Now, that's not to say that some people don't. Some people do because they're awesome. But most of the time, you're just going to get a nice signature. That's it. So when I say prepare your piece with a quote, that is the best way of possibly getting that quote. Now, some celebrities don't do quotes at all. They just won't do it. Like Charlie Hunnam is one. I'd love to have him do a quote. And I met him years ago in Dallas, and he did a quote on every piece that I had. I had written a quote on every piece, and he did it on every single piece. And I think I had eight pieces that day now at a hundred bucks a pop maybe that's why they were like oh, dude this guy's paying a lot of money let's give him what he wants i don't know but since then i've seen him and i've gotten five or six items and he hasn't done any quotes and he'll tell you there's a big sign right at the thing no quotes and usually the reason is again 500 people in line 
the longer it takes her to sign each piece, the longer he's going to be there. The more people have to wait, the more upset they are. And sometimes they just don't get to everybody. And that's a bummer for everyone involved. So I always suggest have your pieces ready to go with quotes, with whatever you want written on it, and especially where you want it. That is huge, guys, huge. Have it where you want it. Now, I recently did a video where I had a Mark McGuire magazine that I got signed. And I did the quote, you know, the sticky note and everything else. And it got signed where I wanted. Now, I already had that signed. That magazine was already signed. It was signed in a place that I didn't like it. So I bought a new magazine, had the autograph done again on the new magazine in the spot that I would like it. Why? Because oftentimes celebrities will look they think they know where the best place is or they just sign. They're not even paying attention to that stuff. So I always look at my pieces, determine where's the best place for the signature, which oftentimes is the dead space. If you have a photo, a poster, stuff like that, look for the dead space. To do it over the character's face, it's kind of silly. Now on a pop, you know, it's a small little area, so you don't really have much of a choice. But if you have a poster or something, to do it over the, the character's face or if the signature is going to go across their chest but it's going to extend to somebody else's face, then maybe you find somewhere else to put it. To me, that's just it just makes the most sense. Having seen so many autographs, especially in the sports world, where they sign on butts or crotches or things like that because that's usually the, uh, the background color is good for a Sharpie, um, I would just say... Have it prepared, and you're more likely to get a piece that you love and that you'll cherish um, than if you don't. Um, and I can I can show you in my collection. I always, always, always go for dead space in a in a photo or a poster because that's just where it looks the best. So I'm gonna give you guys. I'm gonna show you some examples. This is from um, just the other day. I got a mail day to the items that I'm going to be getting signed. And so my first one is the Brienne of Tarth from Game of Thrones. And what I did is I put my tape here and I wrote on here, I'm no lady. And then Sir Brienne of Tarth. Now with the arrows, that lets them know, hey, you're going to put I'm no lady right here and Sir Brienne of Tarth and her autograph right there. Now when I pull this yellow tape up, it's going to be this really cool art with two really nice signatures or a long signature along the bottom. And to me, that's gonna look awesome. Now I have chose to do it in silver to match the, the rest of the piece. So I'm gonna have it done in silver paint pen. So that is one of them. Then I got this one. Now this one, I am still deciding on what color. Now, how do I know what color I should use? So. There's a couple of things that I do, and I'm going to share some of these uh, little tips because I think that I'm a collector, and I always try to help other collectors. You'll see sometimes I'm at a convention, the celebrity will use my marker, and the person behind me see how awesome it looks and says, hey, can I borrow your marker? And I'm like, sure, go ahead, because as a collector, I'm looking out for other collectors, you know what I mean? And I'm looking out for the celebrity, trying to make the experience the best that I can, and if they like my marker better than the one that the celebrity, the, the celebrity might use, then hey, I'm going to do it. Um, so here's a little piece of something that I do. Um, you don't have to do this, but I figured it's something that I do, maybe it'll help. So I went on eBay and I looked for a display and I bought the cheapest one I could find. And it happened to be Robert Pattinson from Twilight. Um, I didn't care what it was. The reason I bought it is because I wanted to test my markers in the different colors on different spots to see what they look like. Now, oftentimes, just like with the Game of Thrones, this is pretty much black. So depending on the marker you use, it's either going to look awesome or it's not going to look so good. So what I did is I have this and you can see, I kind of just write my name or write whatever the color is or whatever, things like that. But the point is to try the different colors on black or on lighter spaces and see what the markers look like. 
And again, because this is the material that I actually get most of my autographs on, these disc plates, which are metal, it, it's going to show me exactly what I want. So, for instance, you know, I'm looking at this one, and it has a lot of browns. It has some silvers. But when I put the silver on it, <coughs> it doesn't look great. So I use this just to kind of test my markers and see what will it look like. Okay, so that's trick number one. The second thing is I use a sheet protector. So part of my head right here. So just your standard sheet protector, they're cheap. You know, you can get clear sheets, whatever you want. Um, then I cut this and I open it up so that I can get little strips. And then what I do is I put my color I just kind of signed something, um, and this is purple. So I signed my name, and then this is purple. Now, I do that because then what I can do is take this and put it on my piece and see what that's going to look like. Okay, so if I hold this back here, does it look good? Eh. Now, will it look much better over here? Absolutely. Now, this is a, a prime example of what I mean by know where you want the signature and then mark it. Because if I just walked up to somebody, let's say Brianna Tarth, Gwendolyn Christie, I hand this to her and I say, yeah, you could sign it anywhere you want. Chances are it's going to go right here. Somewhere in this area. And the problem is, depending on what, what color is used, you're not even going to see it. Now, that purple doesn't look horrible. The pink probably looks better because it stands out a little bit more, you know? So I use this to kind of test my, my markers, to test what's gonna look good. Does the white look good there? Eh, it looks okay. Oftentimes I go with the blue because for some reason the blue just looks good all the time. Now on this one, not so much. Now, I would think, okay, Game of Thrones, there's a lot of blood, there's a lot of gore, maybe red. Okay? I don't love the look of that. I don't love it. So, I got to think, okay, lighter color. Maybe yellow. I don't know. So, this one, the reason I haven't chosen is because, honestly, I'm just not sure. Now, this is a gold pink pen. And as you can see, it kind of just blends right in. It fades out. You don't even see it. So I'm definitely not going to go with that. So I'm still undecided on this piece. But this is just a nice little tip. Make these little pieces, and that way you can try them. When I was doing my Mark McGuire cards, I kind of forged his signature a little bit just to kind of see, okay, that's a standard signature that I had from his other cards, just to see, okay, that's how big he usually does it. So let me compare that on this card to determine where's the best place to put it. Because if I put it here, it might be covering his face. If I put it here, it might be. So this allows me to just move things around without damaging anything. So that's a, a little tip that I do that has helped. But again, most important, write where, where you want it and what you want. Here's my Shazam. And I'm going to have him right on there say my name. It's a quote from the movie. I just think it's funny. So I'm gonna have him do that there. Now I've chosen to do this in gold. So I'm gonna have him sign in gold right there. And that's gonna look awesome. Moth Gideon. This one was hard, choosing the color. I wanted to go red because, you know, they use the red lightsabers for the bad guys. I thought about black, but black to me is so boring. So I tried all sorts of things and I was gonna put it up here. I didn't want to go on his clothes. That's probably where he'll go because I'm, I've seen him do it before. Um, I don't want it on the clothes. So I found this dead space in the bottom that kind of just has his fingertips. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to try for it there. Now, I've gotten his signature probably 15 times at this point. He is awesome. And he does pretty much anything you ask him to do. But every once in a while, he kind of feels like, hey, I, I think it'll look better right there. So he'll do it up there. And I'm not going to, hey, I'm not going to fight him on that. But by having it marked nice and early, chances are, or more than likely, he will do it like that. 
So on this one, I actually decided to go with the red, but because I'm doing it down here, it'll stand out. When I tried the red up here, <coughs> did not look good. So there's one. Here's Neville. And I'm going to go ahead and have him sign Neville Longbottom up here. And I'm doing this one in orange. So that's going to be there. And then I had him put the quote, you and whose army in that box. Now, the reason I put the box, if I just put it this piece, he can sign over here, he can sign on his legs, things like that. So by trying to keep it in this box, I kind of keep it under control a little bit. Now, that's especially important for pieces that you're going to get multiple signatures. So, for instance, when I get that Iron Throne signed, I will have a box made for her to sign in. And the reason is this. You don't know what someone's going to sign it or how they're going to sign it till they do it. Now, Giancarlo Esposito, Moff Gideon, he is awesome. But I remember I gave him a piece that had dueling lightsabers. And I was like, hey, just sign it somewhere up top, right? I was kind of being generous with him. I didn't mark it. Um, and he signed huge. Now, normally his signatures are, are pretty, you know, standard. This one, for some reason, he signed it like that. And he took up so much of the space. And it was supposed to be like a uh, Star Wars universe piece. So it's going to have 20, 25 signatures. <coughs> After his signature, it's it. I'd be lucky if I get 10 because it's so big. He was awesome for it. I loved it. It looks great, but it just changed the plan of what the piece was going to be. So anytime you're going to get multiple signatures, you definitely should have a box laid out for them to sign it. They don't mind. They're like, hey, perfect. They love the idea that it's set. It's ready to go. Tell them exactly what you want. They can give you exactly what you want. You walk away happy. They walk away happy that you were happy. So there's no issues with that. Now, last one is a Darth Vader, and I'm going to have him sign up there. And so there is a quote, and then there's a Zotto. Now, with Hayden Christensen and some other celebrities, they will do quotes, but they will also charge you for them. Um, athletes, 100%, they always charge you. If you want Hall of Fame this or RBI this or... MVP or whatever it might be. They usually give you three words and they charge you significantly. If the autograph is 200, they might charge you $100 for the three words. And if you want multiples, like you want all-star, MVP, gold gloves, or whatever it might be, you pay for each one of those. Now, with celebrities, quotes. Quotes are usually up to six to eight words, depending on the celebrity. Sometimes it's only six. It's really hard to get a good quote for only six words. Most of the time it's eight words. And even that is still very difficult to find a quote. Eight words. Sometimes they'll let you pay for two so that you can get up to 16 words. Most of the time they don't. They want eight words and then they might do another quote up to eight words. Um, and they charge you for that as well. And so I know like Hayden Christensen, I think is a $300 autograph and a $200 quote. He ain't playing around. Now, if it's worth it to you, awesome. It makes your piece unique because you have something different than just the signature. He even charges for the name. So if you want the character name on it, boom, 200 bucks. And so that becomes really steep. Like I have a Marvel poster that I'm working on for Avengers and Endgame. <coughs> And every time I get a signature, you know, you're talking $300 usually for the autograph, another $150 to $200 for a character name. And so minimum for each person that signs it, you're at like $450, $500. That's expensive, especially when you start talking how many Avengers were there, how many characters in Endgame. Um... You know, I think so far I've gotten like 10 signatures. You do the math. Um, but it's it's pricey. So definitely got to be careful and mindful of what you're doing, who you're getting signed. That's kind of where I'm at now. I'm like, ooh, this person's important, but can I justify the autograph? And I've had that with a couple of my baseball pieces. You know, there's a couple of Yankees that I like, but they charge so much for their signature. I'm like, yeah, I don't like it that much. 
Now, Derek Jeter, yeah, he charges a fortune, but we'll pay it. Um, you know, I recently saw Sylvester Stallone did a signing, and his signature's around $1,000 a piece. And, you know, I have a pop, and I thought, oof, $1,000 for the signature. Like, that's that's steep. Um, now, if it's a poster or something like that, you know, it's got to be somebody that you that you connect with. If you're a huge Rocky fan, then that three, you know, that thousand dollars for a pop, you're like, do it, no problem. On a poster, do it. If it's not something that like strikes a chord with you, then you're probably like, yeah, let me think about that. Um, which is what I did, and I decided to pass. A, I don't have the space, and B, that's just a lot of money. I don't. I, I like Sylvester Stallone. Um, I like them in Assassins. Of course, all the Rockies and stuff from Rambo's, but not like thousand dollars worth for me. Um, recently, Carl Weathers was one. You know, he's on the Mandalorian. I took my Mandalorian poster to him, and I think he charges a hundred dollars for signature. And when I brought up my Mandalorian piece, he wanted three hundred dollars to sign it. And I had like five of them because I'm trying to get cast pieces for my website. And, and one for me. So when I said, I don't understand, it says $100 for a signature. He's like, well, this is a premium item. So he charges $300. Um, I almost didn't get any signed, to be honest, because I was so annoyed with him. Um, instead, I got one, the one that's from my collection. But all the others that I'm doing for the website, um, I passed because it's just not worth it. Um, he doesn't command a $300 return, so I can't pay $300 to get it signed. If you go on eBay right now, you can find some of his 8x10s for less than 100 bucks. <clears throat> so how can I justify $300? Um, anyway, so some people are worth it, some people are not. You have to decide that for yourself. But anyway, that's a conversation for another day. Today's conversation, determine... You know, do these little cheat sheets where you can determine which ones are the best for that item. I can honestly tell you that I have had items ready to get signed, thought about it, and then changed my mind on the color last minute. Or saw, like I, I mentioned, Azog in my last video. You know, I had a poster ready to go. And then when I saw how he was signing, how large he was signing, I changed the idea of what I wanted to get done. Um... That was another one where I had it all ready to go with a, with a color, and the celebrity decided he wanted to do a different color. Um, and he signed it the way he wanted to. What are you going to do? I mean, I was not happy with it because I think my choice would have looked better. Um, but I could tell that it was an argument I wasn't going to win. You know, I kind of said it like three times, and he kept going back to wanting to use gold instead of red. And so he did, and, that, and it's fine. It looks good. Um, I think the red probably would have looked better, and it probably would have been something different because he had been signing gold all day. Um, but it is what it is. Little cheat sheets, and then get your items ready. Where do you want it to be signed? How do you want it to be signed? Any quotes, character names, anything like that. Tape it off, mark it down, and be prepared. You walk up to them, you hand them that, they're like, oh, wow, you've done this before. And I'm like, yeah, several hundred times. And they're usually very appreciative of that because they don't have to think about it. You have to understand there's like 500 people in their line. They're thinking about every single signature because they want it to turn out good too. You'll see sometimes they'll sign it and they'll be like, ooh, I don't like this. And we'll grab another 8x10 and sign it. Um, and of course, if you're just getting the 8x10s at the celebrities have at their table that are usually included for the autograph. Um, there's not really a whole lot to, to play with. Um, I would still bring my own markers because oftentimes they sign eight by tens in black Sharpies or silver Sharpies or gold Sharpies, that kind of thing. I just think the paint pens look better than just your standard marker. <coughs> so I would still bring my marker, but today's video is more if you are bringing your own things. If you're bringing action figures, if you're bringing posters, pictures, whatever you might be bringing, these tips will work for those things. You'll get better, higher quality signatures, higher quality items for yourself, for your collection, items that people will look at and be like, oh, wow, that's really cool. 
I have a Back to the Future poster that I had signed and I had quotes put on it from each person except Michael J. Fox, which I understood. Um, and it's awesome. You know, the quotes are make it so much better. If you look at most of the posters out there, they're just signatures. You may find some with character names and you may find some with a quote, maybe two, that kind of thing. Rare do you find one that has three, four, five quotes. And that's, to me, that's awesome. It's something different. Um, I have a lot of Hulk Hogan posters. There's one right be, I'm looking at right there in front of me. And again, really nice large quote on the side. Doesn't do it anymore, supposedly. Um, but back in the day, I was spending so much money there that they did it for me. Um, yeah, so... I think that's it. I think I've given you pretty much all the information I can give. Um, super excited for MegaCon coming up in a couple days. Um, really, ex I still have a whole table of stuff to get prepped, um, which I will be doing over the next couple of days before I leave. But uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think. Did you learn something? Um, does it make you more interested in going to a convention, less interested? Um, thinking about some of the signatures that you may have or pieces you may have to get signed, you know, does this stuff help, you know, um, you'll have to try it and then see, because I know for me, it has helped immensely to get what I want and the quality autographs that I, that I want in my collection. Um, that's why all the things listed on my site, that convention guy collectibles are also things that I've gotten done in the way that I would want them for my own collection. That's why there's always quotes on pictures and things like that. Very rare do you see that I have something that's just a black Sharpie, nothing else. I do have some of those. And that's purely because the celebrity wanted to do it that way. I walk up on my markers and they're like, no, nah, and they just do their own thing. Um, but most of the time my pieces are done in a way that I would want them for my collection, which is either something unique a quote, something from the show or movie, uh, something different that makes my piece unique from somebody else's, um, or at least better than just a standard signature. That's just my thought. Um, but yeah, you'll have to try it out and see if it helps. Um, I know it definitely helps with the line moving faster, which is great for everybody who's waiting in line to get an autograph. It helps the celebrities know exactly what you want and be able to do it quickly and move on. Um, see if it makes your life a little easier too because you're not having to stress as you're talking to the celebrity that you've been waiting to see. You're able to just talk and not worry about your piece because you know it's getting done the way you want it. Um, <coughs> apparently I've been talking a long time. My throat is dry. So I will leave you with that. I hope this was a helpful tip. It's super duper long. But I appreciate you guys watching. Like the video if you learned anything. Leave me a comment. Um, you know, tell me what you think. If uh, tips, suggestions, maybe you've used some markers that you think are awesome, um, or you know of some products or something that you like better. Uh, by all means, I'm always learning, always willing to to learn from other collectors. So I appreciate you guys, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks.